Our next pair of speakers both spend their time uh, helping emergency technology solution providers understand how to really reach and, um, and effectively work with government customers. Uh, during this session, they'll share their best practices and, and examples of what works and what doesn't with this, um, this special sales challenge when, um, when we are dealing with uh, the, the more cutting edge solutions. So please join me in welcoming Harvey Morrison, who's the co-founder of Marion Square and Mike Schrader, who is Kerasos Vice President of the Intelligence and Innovative Solutions team. So gentlemen. So oh, there we go. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, as uh, thanks for the intro, uh, my name is Mike Schrader. I'm one of the heads of sales here at Kerasoft. Um, I have historically managed a, a group of uh, a, a sales unit that goes takes to business, takes to market, a grouping of uh, historically emerging technologies. Some of those have grown up into some pretty. Uh, pretty large name brands that are represented here today, um, but we've never lost our, our fervor for an appetite for helping new technologies, disruptive technologies, access the public sector market. Um, and there's some subtle differences that Harvey and I are going to talk about, you know, how to approach po po positioning, marketing, value propositions, um, uh, just a thoughtful, more thoughtful approach. Um, but I, I'm going to let Harvey introduce himself from Harvey, uh, from Marion Square. Uh, and, and give a little bit of a background on him. Yeah, so I'm, I'm Harvey Morrison. I'm one of the co-founders and CEO of Marion Square. We're a sales consulting organization that really focuses with venture-backed startups trying to do business in the federal government space or bringing emerging technologies uh, to the federal government space. Myself and uh, my team have pretty much spent our whole career working with venture-backed startups, usually the first folks in trying to win the first deals or coming in and trying to, to expand and bring those emerging technologies to market. Um, so we help with everything from market assessments to go to market sales strategies to even the execution of some of those things. So, um, so I'm going to set the stage of what we see not working, right? And we've seen a lot over the 18 years that I've been with the company, seen lots of approaches that have been flawed or have been aired or have just been misguided in, in but you know, not, not for lack of trying. Um, uh, and just want to set the stage and then Harvey's going to walk through some best practices of, of how he recommends his, his clients um, uh, course correct some of these. And we, we're going to give some examples of, of ways that companies have shifted the paradigm in the emerging tech space. And, and I should be clear, emerging tech doesn't just qualify the startup community, although lots of startups are bringing emerging tech. Lots of the big established companies are bringing emerging capabilities to market, and and we see some of the same, same, same flawed thinking. Uh, uh, but the the spray and pray approach, if you'll excuse the 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 that term, um, uh, just getting meetings and the rest. Well, there's a lot of people in government that will take meetings. There's a lot of people in government that will take meetings that you don't want to meet with that are a waste of time. So just focusing on the quantity of meetings, quantity of customer engagements, and, and not on quality, um, again, is a, you know, exclusively focused on that metric is, is, a, is, a, is a wrong level of thinking. Um, reuse of your commercial go-to-market. We see lots of companies showing up with messaging uh, or, or collateral that has worked for them, uh, gaining a foothold in the financial community or the healthcare community. And, while there's aspects that might translate, it doesn't necessarily work, you know, apples to apples translate into, into our public sector market. Um, no understanding of the customer. So lack of understanding of what the mission requirements might be if you're talking to a DOD customer, for example. Um, uh, no collaboration or investment with Kerasoft. I heard a lot of people talk about, you know, this is, we're in it together with you guys and we're, we're, we'll match your energy, but a lot of companies will, believe it or not, show up and, you know, basically drop a stack of white papers on a sales team and expect, you know, leads and, and demand to, to materialize. And um, uh, it, it requires a, level, a, a deeper level of collaboration and joint investment. Um, and then a, a lack of understanding or no plan for 
contracting or partnering or the certs or the barriers to entry that that are uh, you know unique in this marketplace um, uh, a lack of awareness uh, overall in, in uh, uh, it sort of goes back to the understanding the customer um, and I mentioned up front meetings are not the final objective winning contracts should be right we've got to drive activities obviously we want activity that's going to drive New, oper new customer engagements into the sales funnel, drive them down the sales funnel, and uh, but success shouldn't be you know judged based off of a raw number of number of meetings. Um, so Harvey, we talked. Uh, let's talk about understanding the market and doing your research. Um, what are what are some things you recommend as far as uh, how companies can can access this market through a, a deeper understanding of, of the customer and the, and the marketplace? Yeah, we, we always advise our, our customers to spend a lot of time researching the market before you hop in. Um, you really understand which agencies are budgeting and potentially buying solutions or have even bought solutions like yours or technologies like yours in the past. Um, you know, the last thing you want to do is, is get a meeting, go to an agency and sit and have them say, yeah, we, we, we don't buy that or we've never bought that before. So we, we always counsel our, our clients to make sure they're, they're, they're fishing in the right ponds, right, where they can at least get some sort of result out of what they're doing. So do, so do that research up front. Um, really look and try to understand are there sources sought, RFIs, RFPs are in the marketplace. You know, Caitlin and her group, as they mentioned uh, earlier on, are a great resource in working for organizations or working with organizations to identify those types of things. Uh, if you're an emerging technology that's coming out into the market space, I would highly recommend that you take a look at each agency and their innovation programs that they have. You know, getting into the government space with an emerging technology can be hard because the first question they always ask is, is, hey, who else is using it? Right? That, that's what, go, nobody wants to step out and be first. So there are a lot of programs within federal agencies where they, they want to fund the first group using that. They want to be the first ones using that technology or fund innovation programs so they can, they can take advantage of that. So we always counsel our clients to look for those types of programs because we think that's really interesting. Um, you know, understand which primes or systems integrators own contracts that may be associated with your technology. Because what you may find out is we probably shouldn't be calling on the government. We should be calling on the prime or the SI because they own the contract. And we can have a million meetings with the government and they're all going to go, this is really great, but they're not the ones that are going to buy it or they're not the ones that are going to make the recommendation of what to buy. So make sure you have a good sense of not only who your government customer could potentially be, but our SIs and other types of technology partners good and who you should be calling on. Uh, and then lastly, understand, you know, the IDIQs and the contract vehicles that are applicable for your technology. You know, the last thing you want to do is work really hard, get a meeting, get a customer to go, hey, I really, really like it. How do I buy it? And you kind of look at each other and go, well, we've, we've never thought about that. That'll, that'll kill a, a sales cycle. You, you, you kind of use the old adage of, you know, the, the dog that barks at the car every day as it goes by. Well, what does a dog do when the car actually stops one day, right? So think about those things and have a plan for those things before they actually happen. And, and the Kerasoft team is, you know, the contracting pieces, they're, they're awesome at that. So make sure you're working with your Kerasoft team to understand, hey, these are the vehicles we probably want to get access to. Um, and, and they can be very agency specific as well. So, so spend some time researching that. So as my dad used to say, measure twice, cut once. Exactly. Um, all right, so let's talk, about, let's talk about messaging and collateral and how that can uh, be customized or translated to this unique market, and um, what are some ways we can take some commercial commercial messaging uh, and get it, you know, get it government ready or or public sector ready? Yeah, we we work with our clients a lot around understanding the use case and the user scenarios. So where we've seen a lot of success is when you go in and talk to a client, you don't just say, you know, our, our technology is the best at integration or our technology is the best at identifying, you know, uh, an anomaly. You, you want to really paint a picture so the, the, the end customer can, can see and sense it. And the way you do that is you really understand the, the use case and the user scenario. So, so be able to go in and say, you know, we're, we're really good at this. But day to day, here's how it will be used, and here's here are the specific use cases that we solve. Customer agencies, you know, really really appreciate that. You know, make sure that you're developing content, and Mike hit it early on. You know, what may be applicable for DoD 
may not be the same thing for DOJ or Department of Treasury. So make sure you do your homework and have custom types of presentations that address those things. And, and when I say customize it, it's, it's, you know, know that, you know, the DOD, you need an impact level. You don't need FedRAMP. So don't put FedRAMP all over everything. Make sure it's, it's applicable to the audience that, that you're working with. That, that not only shows you've, you've taken the time to, to build something nice, but it, it gives them a level of comfort that you understand the space that you're going into. When, when we work with um, smaller technology companies, our two big things we always talk about are, are access and credibility. Right, the Carousel folks can work really hard to get you access, but you're gonna to have to build credibility. And how do you do that? You do that through things like making your presentation relevant and custom to what, to what they're doing. And I think the last sort of relevant point is, um, the government is, tends to be a few years behind the, the technology adoption curve. Um, so when it comes to disruptive technology, they don't have their eye on the, the Silicon Valley market or the, or the FinTech market. Um, um, so a lot of the emerging tech that's hitting the market that's taken for granted of you know, selling into market segments that are, maybe have their eye on the technology ball a, a, a little bit more advanced, um, you're perpetually selling disruptive technologies that the government didn't know existed yesterday for example. So um, I guess keep that, that sort of paradigm in your mind as far as, as you're, as you're uh, building, building content, building messaging. Just, just, just one more thing too is be able to clearly articulate where your technology fits in the government stack. So for example, you know, Zero Trust, uh, Rob Effers talked about it earlier today, you know, big initiative within the government. Don't just walk in and say, hey, we're a Zero Trust company walk in and say, we're a zero trust company and we fit in the data space or we fit in the you know, visibility and analytics space and here's the use cases that we saw. To take the time to understand that and, and be able to build that out in your presentation. Um, so let's talk about certifications and contracting and how that um, can play a role in, in affecting your, your marketing and uh, you know, marketing's effectiveness. Yeah, we, we see it more and more. Uh, when we started this business six years ago, we, we didn't hear much about FedRAMP or impact levels or those sorts of things. But over the last 18 months, more and more clients are, are waking up to, hey, we, we've got to have a message around uh, FedRAMP or impact level. So, so really understand where your technology is along that path. You, you may not have to be FedRAMP certified at this moment, but at least be able to have a conversation with somebody that says, if you buy us, we, we've looked at the 136 different controls that go along with FedRAMP moderate. And we feel very confident that we can get that done. Be, be able to converse with them. And again, it goes back to access and credibility. But make yourself credible by showing we, we know um, what FedRAMP is or we know what impact level is and we know how to get there. We, we just need to partner with you to be able to do that. And then, and then lastly, <laughs> as we mentioned earlier, you'll be able to explain when somebody says, okay, we like it, how do we buy it? Be able to be able to have that conversation with them. And, and Carousel's got tons of great resources of, in terms of routes to market and can give you five ways a certain, if, if we don't have a transactional history on, on record with that customer, um, we could probably give you five ways similar customers have, have purchased a, a, a technology or either through a contract vehicle or through a partner in our network. Um, uh, one of the, or through one of the CSPs, um, uh, so we could probably help structure a, a response when when it gets to that point. Um, and then, so let's walk through a couple of examples of how some of these some of these real world scenarios where, um, in one case, we had fifty plus meetings and no real opportunities. We've seen that with partnerships that, yeah, the the. The sales team is hungry. The sales team is is you know uh, uh, you know diligent about getting meetings scheduled with customers, um, but you know at the end of a ninety day, one hundred and twenty day cycle, yeah, we we've had fifty meetings and and nothing's come, no next steps. Um, Harvey, how in that scenario, have you seen that paradigm shift? Yeah, yeah. So so that's a really we 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 hear that a lot of times from from clients that come to us. And what we typically find out is, as we say, great, let, let's talk about what your go-to-market messaging is now and what you're targeting. And then we go out and just do a simple search and say, hey, you know, is, is the government looking for this? And, and they'll come back and be like, yeah, there, there are no solicitations. There have been no contracts awarded for, for any of this. There's no innovation programs for this. 
Um, but you know what? If you change your messaging a little bit and you start to say these things, there are all sorts of opportunities that are in there. So maybe that's why you had 50 means with no opportunities. Um, make, again, that gets back to the importance of understanding your client and understanding the market and what the government's looking for and then shaping that message and go to market around that. Um, and this next one, I've, I've seen a lot over the years. The, the company will um, hire a great sales rep and think that everything's going to fall into place. And, right, and it's nothing operate, nothing happens in a vacuum. Nothing happens in a vacuum with Kerasoft. Nothing happens in a vacuum with your, your sellers. Nothing happens in a vacuum with pure just raw marketing that results in, in revenue. All of those components need to come together. Right. And just because hiring a sales rep and, and, you know, handing him a stack of collateral and, and expecting him to him or her to leverage the, a network and, and produce numbers um, is a flawed approach it, it, like that, that need, the, the market needs he or she needs to be flanked by a strong go to market effort that is building the top of the top of the funnel and putting him or her in front of qualified cu customers or qualified prospects to go have conversations and engage with. Um, uh, it just, it doesn't, the, the Rolodex effect is not, you know, is not one that works in this market. Yeah, and, and, and I would add there that that goes back to some of the research and, and understanding the market before you get started. Um, we've worked with clients that said, hey, we, we, we hired a great DOD rep. They know everybody in the DOD, it's awesome. And then you do the research and it's like, DOD is not buying this. DOJ is, Treasury is, other folks are. So as you're building your sales team or building out that organization, make sure you understand, you know, where you're really targeting and, and where the, you know, the target rich environment or opportunity is and, and hire to support that. And then last, we think there's a need in government, but we don't know where to start. So I, I've seen this same scenario play out. Um, the, 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 you know, it's the it's the it's the folks that'll take meetings with who will take who will take meetings with them. It's the folks that'll chase any shiny object that's in the news on, you know, the next the the big the the, the last big breach that happens and they think they have a solution. Um, it, it's sort of it is this is a daunting market if you don't know where to start, um, uh, and and lots of missteps and and wasted cycles that get get chasing the wrong things. Um, Harvey, talk 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 about how you've seen companies. Uh, Again, shift the paradigm here. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll use a, a Craig Abod uh, analogy that he's used with me a lot, which is it's usually the third VP of sales or the third sales rep that come in is the most successful. The first two usually fail because they, they don't have any of this planned out. It takes two people to kind of figure out what's my market, what's my message, where should I be targeting, and the third person comes in and all of a sudden it's like, oh, they were awesome. But the first two really you know laid all the groundwork. So. If you're getting into the space, bringing an emerging technology in, make sure you do that research up front to help those people be you know, as successful as possible.